Let me start with a couple of announcements. So the first thing is that there will be no lectures in this week of November 11 and November 13. And the other is that on November 25, that will be the final lecture. Um, which brings us down to seven more lectures, and so I have to speed up. <laughs> um, uh, no, I mean, uh, I guess today I'm running a significant danger of starting to say incoherent things, so please stop me if I'm like too fast. Um, <laughs> uh, so, so what's the plan for the remaining lectures? So, um, I guess the goal of the lecture first was to define these moduli spaces of local Stukas and uh, also to establish a screen field lemma in the setup. So that will sort of be what I'm trying to do. Uh, so I guess what I will first try to do is prove screen field lemma in the setup. Um, and then in preparation for uh, these modular spaces of local Stukas, uh, I will discuss the version of the Efrain Grassmannian in the search. And so then, so finally, I can discuss these modular spaces of local Stukas. Okay, and all of this will involve working with diamonds quite extensively, and so for this reason, I want to use this lecture and maybe also the next lecture to say a couple of foundational things about diamonds. Um, so I guess the title for today's lecture is "Remarks on Diamonds." Um, uh, so the first thing, and that was probably well known, but I didn't know it, and was, I don't know, so nobody really points this out to me. Um, there is no good notion, there is no, sorry, uh, good notion of affinoid morphism. in rigid geometry. Uh, so let me give an example for this. So let's say K, any non archimedean field. And let's consider the space X, which is the edX spectrum of the two variable algebra, so it's a two-dimensional disk, and two axes. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> I'm not good in choosing notations. Um, T and U, and T, uh, S and T. Little X and little Y. Little X and little Y. <laughs> uh, okay. So I guess similar things will happen all over today's lecture, so please <coughs> tell me. Um, and in there, let's consider the uh, open subset of those pairs x comma y, for which uh, either the absolute value of x is 1 or the absolute value of y is 1. And so that's certainly not a phenoid. So it's covered by two phenoids where one of them is equal to 1, that's a rational subset. But this one is not, so one thing to see is that you can compute the H1 of the structure sheet. And it's some kind of Banach space whose basis is given by uh, uh, such monomials with negative coefficients. It's like, like for the puncture that I find uh, two dimensional space. Um, 
But I claim that uh, there is a cover of X by rational subset UI <coughs> such that uh, all the fiber products UI cross over X is B and UI is a rational subset. In particular, if you know it. So this means that if I look at the morphism from V to X, then it's not a phenoid, but after some base change, it will be a phenoid. Yeah? Ah, by the way, I should save bug of butt for pointing out this example to me. Um, uh, so, so and we can just write this down as cover. <coughs> so you know so it will be covered by three irrational subsets. So you know it will be uh, some of an open subset where really nothing happens, uh, but we need it to cover our space. Uh, so where the absolute values are both less than or equal to pi, where pi in case is usually to the uniformizer. <coughs> Um, and then there are two rational subsets where really something happens, but in these subsets we can now assume that one of the variables is bounded away from zero. So you can require that the absolute value of x is greater or equal to pi, and y is at most x. And then there is another subset where you do the opposite. There's a notion of time space. I mean, I don't think there can be a notion of Stein morphism because at least it should have properties that are ranging higher cohomology groups, which is also fixed. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> and so it's a similar combinatorial exercise to see that this really X is really the union of those two three, of those three guys. Um, and so, if we take this fiber product, uh, that's just empty, so that's good. Certainly a rational subset. Um, <coughs> and then the other two are symmetric, so let's just do the first one. So what is this? So, it's a set of pairs x, y, which are already contained in v. And then what is the extra condition that it's in U1? It says that the absolute value has to be greater or equal to pi. But also, um, sorry, I want it to be in U1 this way. And then uh, the condition is that either the absolute value of x is 1 or the absolute value of y is 1. But if the absolute value of y is 1, I mean, it can't be bigger than 1, so all the absolute value of x has to be 1. So you can just write as a condition that the absolute value of x is 1. And so inside of u1, that's a rational subset. Yeah, so setting the absolute value of some variable to 1 is always a rational subset. And so. And I needed this variable x to be bounded away from pi because otherwise this wouldn't be a rational subset of x. So I mean, this is a rational subset if I just impose this equation and then x is invertible on my space and so I can impose the condition that y over x is absolute value at most one and still get a rational subset. So I guess this verifies the example. And so, uh, I mean, the same example, just joining some p power roots to everything, uh, works in, in the perfectoid world. <coughs> uh, 
Thus, this one question I've been asking, uh, whether uh, so mapping an affinoid perfectoid space to the set of all y over x, which are affinoid perfectoid, uh, that's not a stack. And the problem doesn't occur from some fancy topologies, it already occurs for the simplest topologies, so even for the analytic topology. I mean, the topology given by uh, the underlying topological space. <coughs> um, yeah, so that's bad. Um, but on the other hand, it turns out that this is actually the only problem there is. So, it's a bad problem. Hmm? It's like a bad problem. <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> um, so for this reason, I want to. Uh, well, I mean, people working rigid geometry are so running into issues, right? I mean, so this is an issue which doesn't isn't someone new in the perfect world. Well, it already was there from the start in the rigid world. Um, there's no zero criterion, for example. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't think Stein can be somewhat like Stein and QCQS should be the same as a phenoid, I suppose. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. But I, I think this example shows that like, it really feels quite better. Other bad examples. Yeah. <laughs> Right. Oh, yeah, yeah. Anyway. I mean, if you have a morphism where the base is affinate and all fibers are affinate, it doesn't follow. Ah, uh, is this? Oh. I think this is wrong for Stein. Yeah, I mean, I guess even this is an example for this, right? Like, the fibers are affinate because, like, each fiber is a fiber of oh, one of these rational subsets. Right. Yeah. Um, so. Uh, so one technique to avoid this problem is to use so-called W local spaces. Uh, so these were introduced in my paper with Spargett. But um, so let me first explain what they're supposed to do. So, so let and let me do this in the scheme case. So let X spec A be some uh, affine scheme. And so often you try to analyze a like, scheme by understanding the situation at each local ring and then somehow gluing it together. And so for all x in spec A, or in x, uh, we have the local ring Ax. <coughs> um, but, uh, and so you have a so you would like somewhere to have a space which keeps track of all these local guys together. So one thing you might try to do is to take the product over all points of the space of the local ring. But that's a bad construction, so that's not flat. Because infinite products do not preserve flatness. And so that's kind of a bad thing, but uh, somewhere there is some intermediate guy which roughly looks so well, I guess it's okay for my strings. Yeah, for some rings it's probably okay, but like in general it's not flat. Like when you can check flatness as total freeness and it's probably something okay. But isn't it okay for coherent rings? Isn't it okay for isn't it okay for coherent rings? Like for the serial rings is it flat? You say? I don't know. You can just test flatness against flatness. It's flat on Syria? Because you just hit every monitor and find it. But anyway. Some of these, all these local rings, they are somehow nice. They are just inductive limits of localizations. Some of this product is very far from being of that sort. Mm -hmm. so. um, but there is an intermediate guy. 
uh, A to, well, we know that by AZ for some kind of total Zariski localization. So Z is for Zariski. Uh, which further maps into this product uh, with the following properties. Uh, a to AZ is a filter colimit of algebras of the form uh, a finite product of A invert sum of I's. In some particular that's flat. Oh, should have written this on the other side, anyway. Um, s uh, secondly, uh, so what does the spectrum look like? Uh, the spectrum of AZ. Uh, so it maps to its set of connected components, so that's always true. And this is always a profinite set. Um, and this can actually be identified with a spectrum of A, but not with its usual topology, but with its constructible topology, which is also always a profinite set. So in other words, as a set, uh, it's still just spec A. And so the fiber over some X in spec A is the spectrum of the corresponding local ring at x. So in some sense, the spectrum of this guy is a disjoint union of all of these spectrum of, spectra of the local rings, but it's not, it's not a disjoint union, but rather the topology still remembers a bit of the topology of the spectrum, maybe some of this profile topology. But the fiber is topologically stuck with the local ring. But the fiber is a spectrum of a local ring. What? No, it's topological. Topological fiber. No, no, I mean even in the scheme sense, right? Uh, well, no, topologically, <coughs> sorry. Yeah. yeah. But like, I mean, this is a connected component of the spectrum, so it requires a scheme structure as well, and so as a scheme is okay. Um. Okay, and so. Uh, I'll try to say something about this. So, um, so first, uh, the construction actually goes by first doing some abstract topological construction on any spectral space and then showing that this can be realized uh, on rings. And so I have to say something about spectral spaces first. So, So let me first give one definition of what spectral spaces and spectral maps are. The category of spectral spaces with spectral maps is the pro category of finite T mod spaces. So that's probably a theorem, right. if you define it differently. Okay. Uh, well, you already mentioned the theorem about spectral spaces. Uh, yeah, so... Sorry, I'm confused about three. Yeah? Um, what you did this with spike ZP, AZ, so I guess spike ZP is showing you spike GP. Yeah. Fiber over the close point is spike FP. No, 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 fiber over X and spike A in, this, in the sense of this projection. Oh, sorry. Part two is that that second is isomorphism. This map is an isomorphism. That's the same. Homeomorphism. Um. <coughs> so I guess I already find what spectral spaces, and a map f of x from x to y. 
speckle spaces. The spectral. It's the pre image of any quasi compact open is quasi compact. which then includes some continuity built in. Sure. But I guess what I'm summing up in this definition is that any spectral topological space can be written as a fil co-filtered inverse limit of uh, finite knot spaces in an essentially unique way, and that a map is spectral in this sense if and only if it can be written as a inverse limit of things defined at the finite knot spaces level. I do want you to think of spectral spaces in the sense of the above definition because the definitions that are about to come are best or easy, most easily understood in that uh, incarnation. Okay. What do I want to say? So, for example, uh, so that x an inverse limit of xi, the spectral space. And when I write that, I mean to be understood that these guys are finitely not. So I guess a typical example of finitely not space is like you have a couple of points and then you have a couple of specialization relations among those points. You may also have some kind of circles in there and then maybe some other stuff appearing somewhere else. So that's a finitely not space. Um, so this gadget has a constructible topology. So that's generated by usual opens and complements of quasi compact opens. And uh, then a mapping spectral is also equivalent to it being continuous and being continuous also for the constructible topology. Um, and so then you can think of X with this constructible topology. That's just the inverse limit of the XIs given the discrete topology. So because whenever you have such a finite not space and you allow complements of when I mean, anything is quasi compact, so you're all complements of opens, then because of 16 0 condition, it becomes totally disconnected. It's just a discrete set. Um, but uh, also, you can define a connected set of connected components, phi naught of x. That's just. So, in particular, this guy is profinite, as follows from this description. Uh, Pi naught of x is the inverse limit of the pi naught of xi, and so that's also a profinite set. Um, and so, um, so then we define this notion of a W local space, uh, spectral space. Max is W local. So the W stands for weekly. If one way to say it is that every connected component of X has a unique closed point, 
And so in particular, if x started by f as being connected, then this is the usual definition of like, close, uh, double, uh, local space. Similar to saying that if a scheme is local, if it has a unique maximal ideal. Uh, but we want one more condition which turns out to be crucial for making arguments work. Namely, that if I look at a node by x of a c, the set of closed points of x. Um, that this is a closed subset of x. And the map of W local spaces is W local uh, if it maps close to points of close points. W is for weekly, and so, yeah. Um, uh, so what properties does this have? So the first is that any open cover of a W local space are splits. And for a usual local space, it's clear because one of the open subsets has to contain the closed point, and then this actually covers the space. Um, uh, a local space with one with one generic point. With one closed point. With one closed point. Uh, and connected. What does splits mean? Well, whenever you have like a distant union, <laughs> some UIs mapping to X, then there is a section to that. Is this the same as saying it has a finite refinement or is it open sense? It's the same as saying it has a refinement by a disjoint open and closed sense, yes. Um, <coughs> and the uh, second nice property is so you can look at the map from XC, so that's embedded into so X and this projects onto the set of connected components. And so this composite map here. Well, because every connected component has a unique closed point, it's certainly a bijection. But under this assumption, too, uh, that's actually a homeomorphism. So user set C is closed. And so then the key observation is the following proposition. Uh, that if you look at the inclusion uh, of the category of W local spaces, with W local maps, into all spectral spaces with spectral maps, Then this admits a uh, fly of left or right. I'm confused about this. Right? Right, I don't. Uh, X maps to. Ah, uh, sorry. X, D. So. And so, because it's in a junction, it comes with a map from x e to back to x. And that's the unit of the co-unit. Okay. It says a unit. Uh, co-unit. Hmm? Co-unit. Um, of the adjunction is a co filtered inverse limit. 
of uh, some finite subjective guys where the UI and X are open. So it's an inverse limit of uh, open covers uh, of X. Well, quasi complex open, actually, if you want. So, I mean, just at, abstractly, you're just coming to any W space with a spectral map to X will uniquely factor through XZ by a yes. W local map. Yes, that's right. Is there any stronger uniqueness to that? Like, if you, like maybe the map is already unique if you didn't demand, like, W. No, no, you need to demand W local. Yeah. Um, like you can have examples where it factors in two different ways. One is W local and one isn't. Yes. Um, uh, and moreover, uh, if I look at a uh, set of connected components of XC, The better way to say this is if I look at the close points of XZ, which I know are the same as the set of connected components of XZ because it's W local, um, then this will still map first to XZ and then further to X. And so if I endow X with a constructible topology, that will become an isomorphism. And the fiber over some x in x is a set x x of generalizations of x and x. Fiber of what? Fiber of ah, fiber of x z to to x. Am I getting this right now? Sorry. So I mean, this maps to the connected components. It maps further to. So I think that's what I want to say. A set of generalizations of little x and big x. I which is exactly this kind of picture we had here. Fiber has the subspace topology as if it were sitting in X. Hmm? This fiber in XZ, in X of little x. So that's the topological identification. Right. Okay. Fair enough. Um, and so roughly the construction is that when I mean, you take your X, you somehow chop it off into as many pieces as you can, and then you leave the debris as it is. Um, <laughs> and you don't disassemble it into all the Connecting components, but you're like, all the connecting components are still on this profile and set as they someone come out of this chopping process. <laughs> um, can you do it? Can you describe x upper z in terms of a presentation of x in terms of finite? Yes, that's what I, exactly what I wanted to say. So, construction is as follows. Uh, so, if x is an inverse limit of x i's. And sets, so I'm going to take uh, this example we had there. Maybe it's too big for me. So let's just let's try to do this part only. Um, so these are all like open subsets either the whole thing or is this point together with this point, this point together with this point, or is this point alone, or something like this. Um, and so uh, then first of all, we define this functor on the finite guys. And so there what we do is we're taking the disjoint union over all points uh, of the space of the set of generalizations uh, of this point in there. So if this is xi, then the following will be xi z. So there's one component where I choose the space point, and then the set of generalizations will still be the whole thing. Uh, 
Uh, then there will be different component where I choose this point, and then the set of generalizations will be just this part. Then there will be a part where these two, and then there will be a part where I just have this remaining point. <coughs> and so this construction is functorial in the space, because if you have a map, then it, somehow it has a map on the indexing sets and a map on these sets. But so implicitly there, I'm using that my map wants to be W local, because otherwise I could some, put some other factors in. And already at this level, so. pi naught of x i z is the same as x i. Yeah, and so then pi naught of x i z is just x i as a discrete set, obviously. <laughs> and so, and the fiber over any point is set of generalizations. So at the finite spaces level, we have done what we want to do, and so we just have to check that everything matches well together if you take some inverse limit, which is some funny uh, argument. I mean, thus, in this case, in these spectral spaces, some all quasi capacity arguments you really want to do, they always work. And so, and it's exactly the right language for that kind of argument. So then, uh, xc is the inverse limit. <laughs> so if you apply this to the affine line, what do you get? If you apply this to the affine line, uh, well, so the set of connected components will be like a profinite set, which is like the one point compactification of the integers. And then all the local rings are just, and these fibers are just what you think they should be. So it looks like this with a specialization from a generic point, this with a specialization from a generic point, and then infinitely many copies of that, and then there's a generic point here. And then open subset of this point will just come on, have almost all of these guys in there, but not maybe not the special points. Is that right? I think so, yeah. And so uh, let's call a ring A W local if spec A is and then the corollary of this discussion is that uh, there's a function uh, as described above And it's also adjoined to some inclusion. So A upper Z is always reduced? A upper Z? No. Yeah, no. Like if you have. So this could look like no. well, This whole discussion is topological. No, 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 I mean. Okay, but uh, each of these is just a uh, finite cover of open subsets, which you can reali realize, uh, like, you can find a cofinite system where these are all affinite affine subsets, and then you take, then as open subsets they require a canonical scheme structure, and then you take the inverse limit of those guys. Um, and so this is some kind of total localization of some of your Weekly. Weekly. 
Great. Um, any other one? No. So, what is ZP applies this function? So it's ZP cross QP. Because if I have this discrete valuation ring picture, then this gets mapped to, well, one time we take this as a special point, and it has is this, but then there is another copy of this, and so the scheme is instead. How general is this construction? If you want to in a site? Uh, mm, I don't think it's any more general than it's stated. So, like if you have a site where you can attach to an object an underlying topological space, which happens to be spectral, then you can do this. And like if open subsets give rise to mm. objects in the category, but uh, I don't like. Later, I want to do something like this for diamonds, and I think I really need to verify that there's some kind of spectral space in this picture. Um, and is there any relation with Adels? Like Parchin's Adels? Or? I don't know what Parchin's Adels yeah. are. It looks a little bit like that. Yeah? There's no completion. Okay. There's no completion going on, for example. Yeah? So it's like just some kind of total localization. You only localize it. Not completing. Um, I don't know. You can totally complete now. <laughs> yeah, but. <laughs> <laughs> you do what you like, yeah? <laughs> um, okay. Uh, I should also say, that, I mean, this, yeah, I guess I already said that it's spacefully flat. Um, and so. I think there's actually a useful construction in some cases. Like, I mean, we're using this in certain situations where we want to make some kind of localization, but we don't have finite presentation on our objects a priori. And so, in order to apply basically a flat descent later, um, we need this kind of thing. But working with such a W local ring is more or less the same as, like, if you can prove something for a local ring, then usually you can also do it for a W local ring, because you just have to do some extra topological stuff about profinite sets, and that's usually okay. And so, this is always faithfully flat. This is always faithfully flat, yeah. 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 Um. Okay. So similarly, if R R plus is some perfectoid guy, then uh, we get some R Z R Z plus, which is still perfectoid, such that. Uh, Well, so this will be isomorphic to this bar R plus by the Z functor. And the construction is just that you can find a cofinal system of such coverings which are uh, phenoid open subsets, and these acquire canonical structures as perfect word spaces, you take the inverse limit. And I'm using that perfect word spaces have inverse limits. Um, and so this maps then to spar R plus. And because of the nature that this morphism comes about, it's actually some nice morphism. It's a phenoid point. Oh. It's a definition. So, ah, so this RZ is different from the previous RZ. Oh. Uh. <laughs> Wait. RZ is not. This is not this RZ, I apologize. So, I mean, there's a version of this where you somehow do these with edX spaces. Um, ah. You didn't say that the bubble sections is RZ. Oh, okay. Yeah. No, I mean. There's a kind of completion of the algebraic 
I guess it's some kind of completion of the algebraic thing because at each finite stage, that's true. And so it's certainly dense, but uh, how can I uh, resolve this? So that's a different. <coughs> I'm not trying to make up some notation there. Z was for the scheme and T for tail. T for tail. Okay, yeah, total table prioritization. Good. Hmm? At the bottom it's still a Z. At the bottom it still has to be a Z. <laughs> um, all right, and so this, uh, uh, and so again, we can say that, uh, <coughs> say, general factoid RR plus is W local if the X spectrum is. And so in the Eric world, there's a very funny phenomenon that happens. So let's assume that we have some such a W local perfector guy. I mean, so passing to something W local in the context of our previous stuff about diamonds, not so bad. It's an infinite choice map, so. It's not any worse than what we've done already, at least. Um, but once we are in this situation, and we have any map to any other Huber pair, for example, perfectoid, but I don't actually need this. Uh, um, then if I look at the stuff, what pi, so pi and r is his usual absolute uniformizer. Um, then this is flat over R plus one. Uh, face will be flat. If the map of Alex Spectra is subjective. Construction, I guess, commutes with quotients by ideals, right? Where, no. This construction commutes has to a closed subspace. Is it? Mm. Oh, because mm. of the pi naught. The pi naught is oh, 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 weird. Oh, sorry. Okay. So that's just yeah. Okay. Uh, so the point here is that what is a lo local guy? So a connected W local guy. So that's just the eddic spectrum of some uh, non archimedean field KK plus. And so there we are in the field case, and the field case essentially everything is flat. And so W local space is not so far from being like, it's just some, some stuff about connected components, and connected components somehow don't interfere with the statement. So let's prove this. So, uh, uh, so So it can be checked on stalks of spec, spec, oh, that's not high. but what happens is there is a map from spectrum of R plus one pi to its set of connected components. Well, that's always true. But the set of connected components of this guy is the set of, same as the set of connected components of the Eric spectrum. Because any idempotent will lift uniquely, and conversely, any idempotent is already in the integral elements. 
Um, and so uh, this means that we can actually check this on connected components. This statement. Be because like passing to a connected component, like on the string is always just passing to an item point and then passing to a direct limit. The Even components don't have to be open. No, but it's like a direct limit of open like. Okay. Oh, okay. Direct limit of open closed subsets which are given by item potents. Uh, and so, yeah, those can be checked on connected components. And so this way we can reduce to the case that uh, this guy is connected. And then, uh, I mean, it has a unique closed point, and the set of generalizations of any point is always just an X factor of some KK plus. And so that has to be everything. Where K some non, so K some vector field. And k plus is some open valuation subgram. And, uh, well, then flatness over k plus is the same as total freeness. Oh, one, two. So certainly s plus is flat over k plus. And so this implies that also by reduction of pi. Because it's contained in S. All right. So somehow, as soon as you are reduced to W local space, your essential everything becomes flat in this setup. I apologize that the arguments are not very intuitive, but um, we do what we what works. So, uh, con this is contained in S, and therefore it's torsion free. Um, oh, okay. So let me consider the following. Faceful topology. In this argument here, you kind of passed from the original perfectoid to some drastic localizations, and then you're completing again. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And so that last step is not a problem for, for flatness considerations. Well, of course, this uh, map from R to RT is highly non flat. Right? But you can put all the bad stuff in there, and then after that, it's flat. Okay. <laughs> Uh, it, in some sense, what I'm saying is that uh, the most, this protocol side is somehow as bad as gets out, everything after that is somehow controllable. Um, so definition, so the faceful topology. Do you really need anything about the fact that it's basis for this, or just reduced? I'm saying that I need want this guy to be. Yeah. No, I, maybe I don't actually need this. So for like disconnection, disconnections of your space, 
you actually have the sheath property always. Um, and I think that's the only thing I use here about the sheath property. So this might actually work without perfect void. But like in the construction of this W local guy, I was making an inverse limit and that's canonical only in the perfect world. Well. Um, <coughs> the faithful topology. On perf, is a topology. Please don't ask me about set theoretic issues. Uh, by open covers. And all subjective maps of the phenomenon. I guess it is. It will turn out to be subcanonical, and I guess <coughs> it has to be the canonical topology then. Um, uh, So some corollaries uh, um, ah, so first some remark. Uh, so a map f from x to y will then be a faithful cover if and only if any quasi compact open v and y is in the image of some was a compact open. U and X. Um, yes. Um, the map which sends <coughs> x to the global sections or also the global sections of x plus, but that's easy, uh, is a sheaf on the faithful side. So if we have a y to x face will cover. <laughs> ah, and moreover, if x is a phenoid, then uh, the higher h i's on the faceful side. Um, Brian will complain about what this means if I'm not making any set theoretic things, but. <laughs> you already said you weren't going to take that. <laughs> uh, uh, is uh, almost zero for I think it's zero. Killed by almost pseudo uh, oh, oh, oh. I mean, I, I guess I define this in the setup. Oh, oh, sorry. Cover. And I mean, because we already know everything about open covers, uh, we can assume that they are both familiar. Right? And so then we have the following diagram. And so uh, this here, so we are allowed to refine. Is that like an XT? Thank you. Um, we are allowed to refine, and so uh, replace. So 
Okay. Um, so we have descent here. Uh, by the Proitar case. And descent here is okay by face always start descent. The point is that all the verifications can be reduced to checking it for this O plus mod pi guy. So, you know, that's why I'm proving that the cohomologies of. Oh, I want that this complex 0 to x plus mod pi on x to. Why do plus mod pi? This is almost exact. And, uh, then because this is flat over here, uh, and all the tensor products you will get are just the tensor products here, uh, that's okay by faithfully flat descent. And so, and it's enough to check this for cover, like after refinement, and so uh, that's okay. Do we know that X is doubly local? Or? X T is doubly local. Ah. So I can first make something doubly local, and then after that, any uh, any faceful cover is actually flat in this way. So I mean, checking that it's a sheaf and with high high cohomology, you have to show that. Uh, for any cover, there is a refinement such that this sequence becomes exact. It's some uh, nonsense about the sites. In and order to check almost exactness of this, uh, this sequence? Is it well, in order to check it? that uh, the cohomology of OX plus mod, of O plus mod pi is what you think it is in degree zero and zero in positive degrees, at least almost, uh -huh. you have to check that whenever you have such a cover, this sequence uh, becomes almost exact possibly after refining y. You're allowed to do that. So. Everything is reduced. Yes. Uh, everything is yeah. Yeah. I mean, of course, this whole plasma pi is not reduced. Right. No, it's, uh, at the inclusion of the underlying reduced would seem to be a problem. It doesn't make sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, so I said earlier, I guess, that I think of this uh, perfected spaces as being a very topological entity, and I think that it's a sheaf on this side really confirms it somehow. It's all about the topology. Um, uh, further corollary is that uh, representable Q sheaves are sheaves on the face of side. Uh, so that's as for the Proitar case. Coming back to this question of uh, finite morphisms, uh, <laughs> if you're restricting attention to W local bases, so if you're looking at the association and mapping a W local perfectoid space uh, to the set of Y over X, which are finite perfectoid. Uh, 
then this is a stack uh, for the faceful topology. Meaning, you have effective descent for any surjection of W local spaces. That also follows from, from faceful effective descent. The thing is that for perfectoid spaces, you can do everything uh, with the old plasma pi sheet instead of like the old sheet. They have equivalent information. So plasma pi almost sheet. And there you have the slides. And so, in this sense, really the only obstruction so to this being. I'm sorry, the y's that you're considering there are not necessarily W local? The y's? No. And so. But you're giving yourself descent data on a cover of X by things that are also possibly not W local. That would be okay, but as stated, I guess I like I can always refine them to something W local anyway. So it's somewhat okay. not critical. So I can. So the descent always works if I'm trying to descend something with space W local. Because over there, I mean, it's like this W local guy is essentially just you know, like me feels everything's flat. Uh, well, you can still make extensions of the residue fields. And there's also an issue that not any cover of a profinite set is split, but there's this notion of a extremely disconnected uh, profinite set. And if you somehow make those two assumptions, then as in my paper with Bargraf, it's true that anything splits. Uh, so you can sort of find uh, spaces such that any proital cover of them will split. But of course not any faceful cover because you're allowed to make huge extensions of face fields. <sighs> Weird world. So, yeah, so really the only obstruction, as I already said, to the spluing is someone coming from open covers and there they fail, as shown in the beginning of the lecture. All right. Um, uh, where did I want to say this? I guess I didn't write this down. But uh, do I want to say this now? Yes, I want to say this now. Okay. Um, Okay, so you can also introduce diamonds in the setup. <coughs> well, the definition is just the same as for the proital side, just replacing it by the face flip side. And I guess what I'm spawning a proton morphism then is just what should be called a relatively representable guy. If for all well, maps from a representable guy, so how was I denoting them? It's like X diamond, 2G, or Y diamond, fiber product. times G was Y diamond.
and and then I'm not sure what to call them. A faceful diamond, I don't know. For lack of better ideas, let's call them a faceful diamond for now. Uh, is a sheaf D, let's still call it F, on the faceful side. Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, some of the faithful is just faithful with flat minus flat, so that's why it's faithful, by the way. Um, uh, such that there exists. Are relatively representable. So Jack Chan. Okay, and so uh, that's a definition. Um, so if you start with a uh, X diamond and then you have a kind of faithful equivalence relation on it in some sense, and you make a kind of quotient out of that, and then you get a faithful diamond because of this corollary upstairs. Uh, I just think in terms of making an example. I think that's not a priori clear because the right of representability is not a priori clear, I think. Oh, you mean because this thing is just for affinoid or something? Well, if you have this uh, equivalence relation, then if you pull back again, you're. Uh, I guess if you, you. I would have to think about it. Okay. Um, one thing that I did, did think about in preparation of this lecture was that. I mean, it's not upper right clear that if you have a diamond, which is a sheaf just on the proital side, a certain property, that it's also a sheaf on the faceful side. But it's true. Uh, so, uh, but I don't want to prove this here. It's a non-obvious fact. So, I mean, there's an analog of this just for algebraic spaces. So it was open for a long time whether any algebraic space is a sheaf for the FQC side. It was recently proved by Gubber. It's proved in the... Or it was proved already? I mean, in the back of the Le Mans Marbet? Or is it not? Because they have a diagonal hypothesis? Yes. Is that... Oh. Okay. Hi. Where, where was it? Art? Huh? It's the art in that case. Okay, but like, without any quality separation assumptions. Right. And I don't want to make quality separation assumptions. Um, for now, uh, is that any diamond is a sheaf on the face of the side. And thus a face will be. And so, uh, the next thing I wanted to talk about was, uh, 
I guess it's just point three. Underlying topological spaces of diamonds. This discussion also applies to phase deployments. Um, so, uh, I guess the basic proposition you need in order to make sense of anything is that if you have a map, so if f from x to y is a phase cover. Then, if you look at underlying topological spaces, it's a quotient map. Is it faithful cover of what? Of the curve. Um, I.e., some V and Y is open if and only if. Inverse image. So. And so this means that you can recover the underlying topological space of Y from the one on X plus the equivalent relation here. Um, and it's rejected. Yeah. Uh, plus subjective. But I guess subjective is part of the definition of being recovered. So. Uh, Uh, so one reduces to the affinity case because otherwise the rest of some open covers and it's clear that this is okay. Reduces to x y affinity. Okay, and then what is this map? Um, it's a subjective map certainly. Uh, Spectral spaces, but such a guy is not always a quotient map. Like if you have this, this is a discrete variation ring. This is just two, two discrete points. It's a subjective map of spectral spaces, but it's certainly not a quotient map. Um, but under one further assumption, namely that the map is generalizing, uh, that is true, as I will say in a second. So generalizing means that whenever you have Yeah, it's just going up here. And so if x is an x and y prime specializes to f of x, y, then y. And there exists some, um, let's call it y prime, x prime specializing to x such that f of x prime is equal to y prime. And so, a uh, side note is that any map of analytic attic spaces is generalizing. And so, we get this for free in our setup here. Sure, sure, you did that. Any map is Yeah, any surjective map of analytic map spaces. Any map. This is including a point. Even including a point. Like, you can. In any space, like, if you have such a spark AK plus, which might consist, like, if this is a rank 2 guy valuation, then it has, like, two points, one specializing to the other. But there is no uh, edit space which just has a special point. Any one will also somehow include the rank one variation there. So that's why it's <coughs> one, essentially. Okay. I'll rephrase later. Hmm? I will rephrase later. Okay. Um, and so the, this reduces us to a 
uh, lemma about spectral spaces. Any subjective generalizing map of spectral spaces is is a quotient map. Do you want to say that it's a spectral map? Is it? Oh, uh, uh, I guess I do want to say that. Yeah. I could look at my notes because I'm really using it, but I would very much expect that I do. Um, is a quotient map. And so that's a funny exercise. Okay. So this means that if we use I mean spectrality like you want to say it as constructible to constructible, right? So then you can use the usual that it's constructible to be open. Yeah, so like yeah. So one thing that's useful is that if you have a constructible subset which is stable under generalizations and it's actually open and things like that. Um Okay, so uh, Presentable subjection. Which you may want to take QPF it's, if it's a diamond. Uh, then define the underlying topological space to be the co equalizer of the underlying topological space of the equivalence relation mapping to X. Quasi profinite. And so when I was discussing diamonds, I was asking my uh, subjections to be quasi profinite, which was this. Essentially, probably tall, but. And so the thing is that uh, over a W local base, any QPF morphism is actually probably tall. So this means that if you have any QPF morphism, then after base changing it to this W local guy, it will actually be right on. So that's the statement I've been alluding to earlier uh, when I was discussing this QPF morphisms. And this space is locally structural or something? You don't know? Ah, uh, sorry. Uh, Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. No, I want it to be uh, QCQS, sorry. Like if a morphism is QPF <laughs> and QCQS, <laughs> quasi common, quasi separated, um, then this is two ways. Yeah. That's true. That if you pull back to a W local guy, it will be. And it will still be, have the properties as QPF, quasi profinite, and quasi compact and quasi separated. And uh, this implies that it's <coughs> infinite part of. Um, yeah, I guess I'm pretty much running out of time. So uh, let me just stop here and continue next time. So the space is locally spectral? No, 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 sorry. So in general, this will have very bad properties. So, but right. I will next time introduce some quasi separation assumptions under which this has reasonable properties. Okay.